Hey, man. <laughs> hey, how's my sound? Am I on? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear okay. you. All right. Sorry. So what, are you using your phone now or what? I'm using my phone, yeah. Where'd you get that hat? Uh, this one, a dad hat? I don't know. Target? Target normally, on sale. Normally, you're wearing the normal Dodger Dodger blue hat, but what is this, off-brand? Is this yeah, I have brand? a... Yeah, I have a, I have this one. I have the gray one. It's like a trucker hat. I got a, a, a navy blue and red, red one. So, um, got to get more. <laughs> yeah, thanks for uh, jumping on Instagram. Um, we we haven't. I don't think we've gone live on Instagram for a while. Uh, when we do Instagram, it's a lot more um, casual. I think um, a lot more uh, low key. Um, but I think this is a good good way for us to quickly talk about what's happening. And of course, I can save the video now, and uh, I can also put it on Facebook and YouTube. So I guess this is just Walnut Commentary, just live on Instagram, man. All right, Preston, let's go. Preston says you're not ready for these questions. Why? Is that because, not, because, because, of, because of his hat? Is that why? <laughs> <laughs> Hanley, what's going on, man? There's There was a... There's been a lot going on uh, in the courts recently. Some big news. Why don't you tell everybody the story? I, I assume you're referring to uh, John MacArthur and Grace Community Church. I might be. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I think, I think for most of you who are familiar with our church family, uh, you know that Grace Community Church uh, decided to, a couple weeks ago, defy the government, the governor's orders in the state of California and open services indoor right so that's but having services indoor is one thing uh they are completely not upholding or requiring any of the guidelines so if you if you take a look at grace community church's uh sermons i guess they post them the videos you can watch those you can follow some of their leaders and and they put photos up i mean you're talking about thousands of people and according to john MacArthur, what is it six thousand or more um yeah. People attending attending the last few weeks, no social distancing. Um, people can wear face masks if they want. They can go outside to the tent. They can distance, I guess, around the campus. But for the most part, I think you have most of the people worshiping, singing songs. It's like a regular worship service, no mask. And, and you know, a lot of people think that's pretty crazy, right? So obviously, with, with that many people, um, eventually, the the county, the Los Angeles County, court or whoever health department sent a cease and des desist is that how you say it cease and desist yeah, letter yeah which is yeah. uh you know obviously they talk to the church first but you're talking about a thousand dollars a day of fines and a threat of arrest so yeah. as a result uh, most of you know macarthur lawyered up uh the church lawyered up with uh jenna ellis and what's the other guy's name charles something i don't remember the other someone, guy's name someone correct me these guys are big dogs <laughs> these guys are big um you know jenna ellis she advises the trump administration um and and the other guy's a a big constitutional justice lawyer as well so i mean they can afford grace mm -hmm. church can afford to do this and as a result they they filed the suit uh you know probably just to just to stop some of the charges and just to figure out what, what they can do. But they, I know they filed a suit against the state of California for um, breaching constitutional rights. And uh, it was a surprise to us that today, a one LA County Superior Court justice or judge uh, ruled in favor of Grace Community Church. Now, keep in mind, this is a, a temporary ruling. And they basically ruled that, uh, you know, the, the county doesn't have the right to infringe upon the constitutional rights of Grace Community Church to hold indoor services um, mm. with, you know, at whatever number of people they can fill up. And uh, there's going to be a hearing on September 4th. So that'll be the full hearing. So, so I think according to Jenna Ellis's Twitter, as well as the press release statement from Grace Church, as well as you could Google this, um, what it seems like the agreement is that Grace Church would uh, uphold two things they would wear face masks and they would practice social distancing but what they're allowed to do which no other church is supposed to be doing what they're allowed to do is to meet indoors with that with no numerical limit and they can mm -hmm. sing indoors 
So those are some of the things that the governor said we can't do. We can't sing indoors. We can't meet indoors. And we, and we have, and when we were permitted to meet indoors before the last lockdown, there was a limit of 25% of your capacity or a hundred max, right? So you're yeah. talking about now Grace Community Church um, setting a path that is, there's going to be a lot of confusion. I, I, I think that uh, someone, Governor Newsom or someone has to say something because mm. churches are going to begin to say, okay, does this mean we can begin to pivot back indoors? You know, so right, that's, right, that's a little right. bit of what happened today. Yeah. And uh, how, were you surprised at the news? Yeah, when yeah, you saw I was it? surprised. Yeah, I was surprised. State of California, L.A. County, uh, both liberal. Um, mm -hmm. You know, why would they why would they allow such thing? And keep in mind that that there are a majority of conservative pastors and churches that don't really agree with uh, the position taken by Grace Church. Right. Mm -hmm. Respecting mm -hmm. them, respect, high regard for MacArthur and Grace Church, uh, but but not. But, you know, if we were to go indoors, we would still want to maintain social distancing, maintain some numerical limit, and definitely wear face masks. And even yeah. singing, you know, would would be something that we would take caution on. So, I mean, you know, we're, we're talking about a few different subjects here. <laughs> right, right. I mean, okay, were you happy with the result? <laughs> mixed, mixed results, mixed results, you know. Um, I was just minding my own business today, doing my work. And actually, thank you uh, to to Katie, uh, Auntie Katie, uh, Katie Lee, our children's director. She yeah. uh, she messaged our English pastors and said, hey, you check out, um, you know, here's a Twitter update. I mean, we talk about it. I mean, we talk about it as a as a pastoral staff. And so, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, I sent that Twitter account. Uh, I sent that Twitter thing to, to Pastor Albert and the lead pastors. And, you know, yeah. there's some other pastoral networks. Uh, you know, get it going, you know, they're getting the, the word out. And, and then if you go on Facebook, you began to see people talking about it, posting about it. And then finally, the article starting to come out, right? I think right, it takes right. some time for people to write up articles and put it out. Right. So I was surprised. I was surprised that, that the, that, uh, LA County, once again, I was surprised that, uh, that's your question, right? What was, was I happy? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, first I, I asked you if you're surprised, and then I asked you, were you happy with the result? Um, I'm happy not in the sense that, that, uh, that Grace Church, <laughs> you know, maybe may saying that what they're doing is probably the best thing uh, mm. health-wise, mm. but I'm happy that, that a liberal city, mm. and, uh, and I know Instagram's for young people, so just, you know, take it with a grain of salt when I say liberal. You know, if you're a Calvinist, I'm not talking about you, right? Uh, but, you know, like, like when you're talking about a liberal city in a very liberal state where you can get that kind of ruling, um, I wouldn't be surprised if this type of ruling went down in Alabama, Georgia, or Texas, but California. To mm -hmm. that end, I, I am happy because that means for other issues, non-COVID, I think there's some hope for the church in terms of our constitutional right. rights going forward, right? Right. So when they meet again, when it when it's official on September, is there a chance that it could get uh, overruled or overturned? I guess I should say, or is this pretty I have much no like idea. this is this is it? So, is there a lawyer on here? Comment. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I don't know. You know, so I mean, when I saw that thing, I mean, you, mm. you could see how every everything is pretty political. I mean, so you could yeah. see that that this would be a temporary holding uh, order, right? It's just basically. Right is this basically protecting Grace Church for the time being where they're free of fines and they're free of the threat of arrest. Why? Because mm -hmm. they sued. And so if the, if the judge gave them this, this temporary, like, okay, this temporary agreement until the full hearing, then at least they're clear until September 4th. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what can happen. Obviously we saw with Nevada uh, that. Oh yeah. You know, Calvary oh, yeah. Chapel versus Nevada went up to the Supreme court. The yeah. Supreme court chose not to, not to um, honor the case or not to take the case, which I disagree right. with that, but. Right. Yeah. So what happens to FCBC Walnut then? Because we've been planning this whole drive-in thing for a while, but if we can meet inside, does this change anything? If it wasn't so hot, I don't think it would change anything. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I'm like I, sweating, I, yeah. No, I, I, I think that, you know, we had an original plan to open according to guidelines. And honestly, if you're talking about a single service and we would we would keep the numerical 
either than the numbers. So this is not even a, about a government guideline, right? Mm -hmm. If if medically, if the doctors tell us or the medical community tells us that face masks are helpful and you're indoors, so please maintain six feet, then in our worship center, uh, that's 75 people. So mm -hmm. if you space out chairs six feet apart from each other, single chairs, that's a maximum of 75 people. All right. So we're talking about if we run a, a, a service, each service would be 75 people with <laughs> face mask on with yeah. all of the protocol, you know, the temperature checks, the registration, everything. And I, I think those were good plans. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and so if, if we follow those plans, that could be something that happens that when we pivot back, you know, indoors. But in terms of going all the way to where Grace Church is, where there's no distancing, mm -hmm. face mask not required, just full on, full open church um I, I doubt that fcbc would go that route um and <laughs> i doubt that we would go that route and i think it's another topic we've talked about it but i think as you know our church we we take covid19 seriously you know we think right. it's more than just a flu right you're right do you do you want to come back hanley do you want to come back absolutely absolutely um okay i, I want to come back and i think that if we're going to bring if one of the goals is to Again, we're going to continue to serve the the online community. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, if one of our goals is to bring back as many people as possible, then we want to love our neighbor and we want to love each other by by recognizing that the most people are going to feel comfortable coming back if we meet outdoors. The more space yeah. you have, the more airflow you have. Um, you know, so I think our parking lot service is still the way to go it's hot but if we meet at the right hours it's still the way to go to bring back the most people as possible on campus yeah so, so I, I, yeah. I i i'm good to go with that and i guess until september 4th you know we're we're gonna sit and wait to see what happens and so you know tomorrow uh i'll be at church what 7 we're gonna do a full run through we're gonna test That's all right. of our equipment uh right. it's gonna be hot but not that hot <laughs> Not like hot Atlanta, <laughs> hot, you know, and then uh, we're going to, on Sunday morning, Sunday morning, we'll be in there and we'll have our service eight o'clock. And again, these are soft openings, right? So only the leaders are, the leaders and helpers have been invited. We registered, we put in our license plate, you know, this is the car we're going to bring. And there's 40 cars, uh, maybe more that have come in, but there's 40 cars that officially registered. So that's what we'll have as a soft yeah. opening. All we're doing is testing the platform, the equipment testing the stream. Um, and, um, and this week, there's all the sermons and worship are still being pre-recorded. So there's going to be two, we're running two tracks this week. Right, right, right. Are you, how, how is this affecting you as a pastor? Like, do you feel that you are saddened about this entire thing? Just everything that's been happening. It's been quite a while now since we've met together as a church. I, I haven't even seen you really, you know, like really, right? Like, I mean, how do you, how do you, how does this affect Pastor Hanley's mental state? <laughs> I think I'm okay. You know, I mean, obviously I prefer, uh, I prefer the structure we had before. I prefer things to go back to normal. I want to see people. I want to preach to people real life. I want to shepherd people in person, you know, uh, but I think this is what it is. I mean, you know, the whole world is going through, this trial together, you know, God is sovereign. He has his purposes. There's a lot of good that can come out of this. I uh, just got a text right now from one of our, one of our lay leaders uh, texting about the, the MacArthur article about what happened. So yeah, <laughs> nice. I, mean, I, I, so I think this is going to go around, but, but yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, you probably know, I think 20, what was it? 2018, 2018, uh, you know, I, I went through some uh, emotional, I, I think a, a bunch of our pastors transitioned out. That was a really mm -hmm. hard time. I remember um, that, yeah. And, you know, it, that, was a, that was a time where uh, I'm not sure what I was going through, uh, but I, I, I think I went through some, um, some emotional downtime or whatever you call it. Like uh, I don't think dark, I was depressed, dark night of the but soul. it was pretty bad. <laughs> no. Uh, no, I don't, I, I don't, I don't I, hold to that kind know, of thing. St. John of the Cross, that, that's a whole different thing. <laughs> but uh, but um, yeah, I mean, and, and, and during that time, I had to talk, I talked to some pastors who helped me through it. And uh, I think that prepared me for this. So, um, mm, you know, mm. I mean, I, I think when we had to pivot, we had to pivot 
and we're just going a week to week to week and I'm doing things now that I would would have never done before maybe I was too proud <laughs> you know I would never make a you're... devotional video before I, I wouldn't get on <laughs> yeah, camera you're doing, Why do you and you're doing this you're doing this like with that? me right now <laughs> Yeah, Instagram is yeah. Instagram. I'm too old for Instagram. Keep in mind, I'm I'm turning forty next year. So uh, hey, man, you know, you know, I I, I appreciate <laughs> I appreciate the extra effort that you're putting in as a pastor to meet your people this way. Actually, I wanted to talk to you about your devotion that you did this past week. Your devotion oh, yeah, okay. was your devotion was on giving, right? Was it on giving? And so I I, yeah, I felt that like you were pretty much yeah. I, I felt that you said like. Yeah, our church is pretty good at giving. Like, I, I felt that you, you kind of just said, yeah, that's the application, and we're doing a good job. Keep it up over so in the midst of the pandemic. Is that is that true? Is that pretty much, am I getting the point right that you said? Yeah, you know, we're going through Malachi, uh, just trying to wrap it up, and uh, that's for our Wednesday night prayer meetings, and the passage just happens to be about the one where, you know, uh, Israel gets rebuked, uh, through Malachi by God for robbing God and withholding their tithes. So that's, yeah. that's where it came from. But regarding our church, I think we've, we've done a, our people have been very faithful. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think early on when, when offering dropped during COVID, it's just because people, certain people didn't know how to get online, to give online mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. or certain people needed to send their giving in. And we expect that with the pandemic and with the economic situation that we're going to lose we're going to go uh, down, but uh, our people are really faithful holding us, holding us together. And whenever we had a need, we asked for it. Blessings that I have yeah, as, yeah. as a pastor, you know, a lot of pastors have a hard time talking about money, but I'll just mm -hmm. go up and, and people know I'm not asking for, you know, this is not health and wealth. I'll just go up on an announcement <laughs> and I'll say, Hey, you know, um, I don't know if you remember this, but I said, Hey, if you guys want to give to the relief team mm -hmm. yeah. and all this, all this giving came in, I, I, I said, Hey, I, I need you. I need you guys to know that our missions giving is down. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, uh, we're not sending any short-term missionaries, but we're still, we still want to support the missionaries who are out there. And what we have, like, what is it? 18 or 13 or whatever I said. And I gave yeah. the exact numbers that they could find. Um, and I said, this is how much we usually get. This is where we're at. And within a couple of weeks, you know, funds started coming in. Right. So, and people actually texted, they're like, Hey, how do we give specifically to missions? Do we need to designate it? Uh, so, I just, I'm so blessed by our church. I, I think our people love Christ and um, those who really walk with the Lord. I think they, they understand stewardship, you know, yeah. um, obviously we need to teach on it more, but. Yeah, actually, since we're on Instagram right now, should young people, does this apply to young people too? Do they also need to give to the church? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. But I think the new the, the New Testament principle the New Testament principle is is not the ten percent, right? It's mm, it's mm -hmm. it's God loves a cheerful giver. If you want to listen to the devotional, uh, you right, can. Yeah. But yeah. but it's it's you know God looks at God looks at the heart and He looks at what you're able to give based on Him knowing how how He has enabled you given what what you have. So He knows how we're using our resources, and I, and I, and I think you just give from your heart what you're able to. Uh, I think God also wants us to be responsible. So if you give all your offering away and then you end up being irresponsible, like you go into debt, I think that doesn't honor God, yeah, right? So yeah. there's going to be certain seasons as a young person, yeah. as a college student, or as a, you know, you're just starting your work and you might not be able to give as much or depending on where you're at in life, you lost your job or something, you can't give anything for a season. I don't, I don't think God holds that down on you. You know, we're not a legalistic it's not a legalistic system, you know? Mm, right, so, right, right, yeah. right. So I think for young people, you give what you're able to give. Mm. You know? How about if you're a child? Does it apply to children? Yeah, every every child, you know, if your parents are able, you know, just come to church with a dollar. You know, parents, <laughs> give your give your kids a dollar. Or um, I guess you can give them change, but uh, if yeah. you give them a, but it, but it costs more. Uh, so I'm going to tell you this. So mm, mm. so when our, when our treasurer, whoever takes change to the bank yeah. to deposit it, as an offering, you know, I think it costs a little more. Uh, so I, I think the, the whole, the whole point of, of the kids is not so much to make revenue, right? It's more to train the kid's heart. It's just to, yeah. it's just to teach kids from a very young age that look, you know, everything that we have is from God. And so, you know, when the, when the offering plate goes around or however it is, I mean, I guess with e-offering, how do you do it for kids nowadays? But, <laughs> they but might I think be just able to. to just to teach kids. And then so that when they become adults, they have this pattern set up where, Hey, my, my mom sent me to, 
church when I was little, you know, every, every Sunday with a buck or five bucks or 20 bucks or whatever it is that the parents want yeah. to give. It's really the parents giving, but. Right, right, right. Of course. Yeah. Setting that pattern. Well, Hanley, thanks for coming on this call. Um, I want to respect your time. It is getting late, uh, but I got one more question for you. Um, yes. I've, I've been keeping up with the NBA. I think you have too. Uh, <laughs> Kyle Kuzma, uh, said that um what did he say he said if jesus was in front of him he'd still shoot it anyways meaning shoot the basketball anyways uh kuzma made a game-winning shot it was a three-pointer a couple nights ago do you have a response to that uh you know i heard something like that i i haven't been able to pay attention to the to sports as much as i've, I've wanted to it's been so busy with covid and everything uh but but i would say I mean, I, I guess he has the right to shoot it if that's the question. Are, are you are you saying can he beat Jesus? Or, I, I mean, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I guess I'm I'm just asking. How should I even think about this? Would Jesus play basketball if you no, were guarded, I mean, you, if you were guarded by Jesus? Do you think you would try to shoot over him? Like I I, I don't know how to how I'm supposed to process that statement. Yeah, I, well, well, I I I think the one thing is that you you know if Jesus is trying to play against you, right? So the question is, can you shoot over him if he's trying to guard you? Yeah. And the answer is no, because because uh, it doesn't matter how tall he was or how athletic he was. If you if you're talking about his humanity, he was not a basketball player. He's the son of God, right? So I mean, if you're just talking about his humanity, uh, I don't think we can do that, right? Mm -hmm. like, like you can't separate the hypostatic. Is it the hypostatic union? Right? Hypostatic okay, can, union. Yes, can we right. bring this in right now? Right? right? Yeah, like like saying, Jesus is a hundred percent man, hundred percent God all the time. So the question that Kyle Kuzma is asking is, can he shoot over God? And the answer is no. no. You know, so so let's not even get into like, can you can you shoot over the humanity of Christ? You know, well, okay, if you're a heretic, <laughs> you know, but but no, you cannot you cannot shoot over you know you cannot shoot over someone who is fully God, fully man, uh, if he's trying to defend you. And if, if, if you happen to make it, it's because he let you, you know? And, right, right. and I, I really think if Kyle Kuzma tried to play basketball against Jesus, he'd probably get saved. You know, just, just he, he would recognize, he would recognize who he's playing against and he would be like, there, there is a God, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I appreciate you take, taking the hard questions and, uh, I guess even these uh, not hard questions, I guess. Thanks for, thanks for your time, man. Uh, uh, let me know how tomorrow night or how tomorrow morning goes. And um, yeah, maybe we'll have, to, we'll have to jump on Instagram again some other time. Thanks, man. Have a good okay. night. All right. Good night, man. Take care. Bye.